So what we learn here is that we pass on a lot of guys for any one of these three reasons. If you don't have comfort and fun and attraction, there is no second date. So you never have to talk yourself in to going on a second date ever. Hey, this is Evan Marcatz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, your personal trainer for love. Welcome back to the Love You podcast. Thank you for listening, and uh, I really appreciate it. If you enjoy this podcast, please, at the end, uh, go to Apple, go to Spotify, uh, share some positive words of affirmation. They mean the world to me. They increase our visibility in the algorithm, put us up the podcast rankings, and uh, share this. Uh, You could always share an episode with a friend if you feel like it strikes you. Uh, And she's also single and looking for love. Uh, Word of mouth is the best way to spread things, not through algorithms, I think. At the end of the podcast, we'll talk about how, if you're serious about love, I could help you find it. Before then, I want to make sure that I'm giving you great value. So here's something that's in week eight of Love You. It is something that is near and dear to me, and it is something that has helped lots of women. And I want to share it with you right now. As always, I will start by talking about myself, not because I am a toxic narcissist, but because I'm very, very experienced at this dating thing. And I often cite, right, not just my 20 years of coaching, but my 300 dates, because combined, that lets you know that I know what it's like to be single and I know what it's like to be married and that I understand what you're going through. It's important to be understood. It's important to be heard. And I do listen to women three, four hours a day for 20 years. So if you're listening right now and you're wondering who the hell is this guy, I am someone who's been listening to women a lot. And when you go on a lot of dates, what I hope you've concluded, if you've gone on a lot of dates, uh, the conclusions I drew from going on a lot of dates, uh, I wrote them down here because I don't remember them. Number one, if you go on 300 dates, you realize dating's not a big deal. A lot of people who are looking for love who have been, who don't like dating, who are introverted, who have an aversion to online dating, who spent decades being married and are sort of tiptoeing into the waters, they approach dating from a place of anxiety and fear uh, as if they were about to go bungee jumping or something. That's how they feel around dating. When you do something 300 times, it ceases to become scary. So I could acknowledge that anything could be scary. You know, if you are a hermit, stepping outside is scary. If if you... uh, Um, have never been on a ski slope, uh, that would be scary. So I think there's many things that can be scary, but that's mostly because you don't have any experience with it. So if you get a lot of experience with dating, you realize dating does not have to be scary. Other great thing about going on a lot of dates is that you get to learn about yourself. You get to figure out what you're doing wrong. Going out with women who, for better or worse, gave me a lot of unsolicited feedback and told me what they didn't like about me really helped me see myself through their eyes. And if someone, if you get enough feedback, it allows you to course correct. I didn't realize how important financial generosity was to women, right? So I became the guy who picked up the check every single time, no questions asked. That was that was what I learned to do, but I didn't come uh, out, I wasn't taught by my dad about that. It was just a thing that I had to realize from the idea that letting someone split the check would prevent me from getting a second date. And whether I liked it or agreed with it or understood it didn't matter. If you want to be better, you got to give people what they want. So I learned to give women more of what they wanted on the dates. Also learned to become a much better listener, become more engaged ask better questions, not to go on monologues like I do here because I have no one else to talk to, but became a much better listener. Why? Because people want to be listened to. If you've ever gone on dates with guys who talk all the time, you know how rare it is to find a guy who's genuinely inquisitive and genuinely engaged and genuinely wants to understand you and your accomplishments and your travels and your dreams and your inner life and your friends and your family who wants to know and ask follow-up questions. That is an acquired skill, but it's a skill that anybody could have. Other thing about dating is that you learn what you like and why. Hopefully you have an opportunity to learn from that experience where if I keep on going out with women that I think I'm going to like based on their profile or their photos, and I discover in real life that I don't, some cognitive dissonance is going to happen. And I'll be like, huh, maybe I'm overrating looks. Maybe I'm overrating accomplishments. Maybe I'm overrating someone who seems cool and edgy and cultured. 
right? Maybe I'm overrating credentials, academics, job status, money. Maybe. Maybe someone with a great profile isn't always a great person just because they're a good writer. Maybe someone who's really attractive on the page is unattractive in person because they're not a great conversationalist, because they're egotistical, because they um, have no self-awareness, because they can't go deep. So prolific dating allows you to question your own premises to some degree and hopefully get better at course correcting on your own. And then finally, prolific dating allows you to get better at what you're doing wrong so you can be better not only at getting second dates, right? Being the kind of person who always gets a second date is a skill. It's a skill we teach in week eight of Love You. And also discerning who deserves a second date with you so you don't continue to waste time on the wrong men under the guise that I should give him a chance. You know, he seems nice. I should go out with him again. Or we have intense chemistry, but he gives me an icky feeling, but I'm going to go out with him again just because he's hot and I'm lonely and I just want to explore it. What I'm about to share with you is a way to cut through that so that you don't have to waste time, not a second date, not a third date, not one month, not three months on someone that you should have discarded on the first date. So that is my belief is that dating is a skill, All right? No one wants to think of it as a skill, but it is absolutely an acquired skill like playing piano or coding a website, right? Whatever it is that you do professionally, it is a skill. You're better at it now than when you first started doing that job. And if you can learn this skill, it'll, it'll save you so much time. It'll save you so much pain down the road. And if you doubt that, I want you to take a moment to consider how many times have you gone on second dates? third dates with guys you're like, I don't know why I'm here. I'm not attracted to this guy. I don't even think I like this guy. I'm bored with this guy. I don't trust this guy. I would rather be at home doing my laundry, watching TV, petting my cat. I would rather be anywhere than here. And you keep going out with that guy for some reason because you don't trust your judgment, because it doesn't seem like there's anything better out there because nothing's ever worked. So you figure you'll try it. I'll give a chance to the guy who seems nice, who I'm wholly unattracted to. I'll give a chance to a guy where I do get the sense he's a bad dude, but at least he has a good job. Right? We're going to dispense with all of that right now. And I know how to dispense of it, but I do have notes on my next page. So I got to check out those notes. Assuming that you don't have the time or patience to do what I did in my late 20s and early 30s and go out on one or two dates a week for 10 years and record all of your thoughts so that you can make sense of them coherently, I want to give you a shortcut. And this is a shortcut uh, that was reiterated. Right? The only reason, sometimes I do podcasts simply because something is in the ether and it made me think of something that I wrote a long time ago. Most recently, there was an article written by Faith Hill in The Atlantic. The Atlantic's a really wonderful magazine. I have an online subscription and a, and a print subscription as well. I would recommend you get it. It is well worth your money. Um, so a recent article by Faith Hill in The Atlantic was called, No, You Shouldn't Date Him Till You Hate Him. Uh, it poses this question. Uh, about the idea and something that matchmakers say. Matchmakers are a, sort of a stone's throw from dating coaches, and I do not want to trash matchmakers to say, but it's very common for matchmakers to say, and I can understand why. You should give a guy multiple chances. Give him a shot. Give him two or three dates until you determine that you definitely, definitely don't want to see, uh, don't want to see him again, just to see if something develops. Now, women, in my experience, are far more likely to do this than men. Men are simple, visual creatures. If they don't find themselves physically attracted to you um, from the very beginning, it'll be very hard to convince them to give you an another chance. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing, but it is what it is. I think women uh, are more likely to question their own judgment. It's why I have a job. Uh, women are more likely to quest th question their own judgment. Men are more likely to be arrogant and wrong. And so when you're questioning your judgment, we've found ourselves in a little bit of a problem spot because you can't be the best version of yourself if you're in your head questioning your judgment all the time. And so my goal is not to get you to 
give a guy a chance, right, to force chemistry, even though we know intellectually chemistry is not a great predictor of your future. Attraction is just attraction, right? But you should have a baseline of attraction. And then there's the opposite is, you know, going out with a guy where there's there's no attraction and talking yourself into going on mercy dates with guys just because they're nice and they're interested and nothing better is coming along, right? Or going out with a guy who looks really good on paper, but you're just not feeling it. And feeling is all we're trying to tap into here in Love You is the idea that your feelings matter, the primacy of your feelings. Your feelings will tell you everything. It'll tell you far more than I could tell you if you listen to your feelings. Here's a money quote from this article. I'll read it because I can't I didn't memorize it. Daters have a dilemma then. They shouldn't depend on the spark because initial attractions really can be misleading, but they also shouldn't force themselves ceaselessly forward against their instincts. And it's not realistic, researchers told me, to override that instinct with logic and only consider who makes a good partner on paper. You need to have some degree of natural chemistry, but you also need the patience to develop it. The right partner will offer the thrill of possibility, but also the sturdiness of familiarity. Now, that is an accurate paragraph. It's also sort of a dense paragraph. So I think most people like things that are simple to understand. And so here's something that's really simple under to understand that you could take to the bank. And it is from week eight of Love You on First Dates. If you go on a first date with a guy, and your job is to show him a great time, right? Make sure that he feels attractive. Make sure he feels appreciated. Make sure he feels interesting. Make sure he feels like he's doing a good job. That's what makes you a great date. Now that you're a great date, 90% of guys want to see you again. And you're left with, okay, out of that 90% who want to see me again, who do I want to see again? What is a good investment of my time? How can I even trust my own judgment after all of this turnover? The answer is this. Judge a man after the date on three specific categories, comfort, fun, and attraction. I'll say it again, comfort, fun, attraction. Comfort is, can I be myself? Can I let down my guard? Can, do I feel like I could trust this person? Does this feel like something where I don't have to worry about what I say. I don't have to censor myself. A previous episode, we talked about authenticity, right? So comfort comfortable is like, oh my God, you're, you're a nice guy. I could be myself. I don't have to be um, breathless. I don't have to be nervous. I don't have to be biting my tongue. I don't have to be afraid whether you're going to like me. I don't have to be afraid of putting my foot in my mouth, that I'm too chatty, that I'm too quiet. Like comfort is a sense of ease. Oh my God, I'm talking to someone who, this person would be my friend in real life. You need to have comfort. And these scores on comfort, fun, and attraction have to be positive scores, which we will call on a one to 10 scale above a six. These are all made up numbers. One to 10 scales are made up. Sixes are made up. But the whole point is you have to feel positively about this guy. You can't be neutral to on the fence about everything. So positive score in comfort, positive score in fun. Fun is, would I want to do this again? Did I have a pleasant enough evening? Was the conversation interesting enough? Did we laugh enough, connect enough, do something fun enough to say, that was a good night. I'd do that again. That's all. Was it fun? Six or more. And finally, attraction. Everybody knows attraction. We've often rated people on attractive, right? whether we could, it, his attractiveness or the chemistry. That has to be at least a six as well. Right. If you don't have a six in chemistry or attraction, there's no second date. And that is across the board. So comfort, fun, attraction, sixes at least across the board. If there's a three on any of them, if he is a really good looking guy, but he feels like a player and you don't trust him, no second date. If he's a really nice guy who's very respectful, picks up the check, but he bores you to tears, no second date. If he did everything right, but you didn't feel like you could let down your guard and be yourself with him. He might have been a good date on paper, but you found yourself kind of contorting yourself, not wondering what you could say because you weren't really connecting. You weren't quite on the same wavelength. And so you weren't the best version of you on the date. The comfort, no second date. 
So what we learn here is that we pass on a lot of guys for any one of these three reasons. If you don't have comfort and fun and attraction, there is no second date. So you never have to talk yourself in to going on a second date ever. And you now have metrics to spare you the trouble of going out with a boring guy, an unattractive guy where there's no chemistry, or a hot guy where you don't feel relaxed and you could be yourself. You now have permission to say, nope, not my guy. My dating coach told me so. And now we have far fewer second dates that you don't want to go on and we don't have to spend further time down the road trying to develop things that should be there as a baseline from the very beginning. I've been coaching for 20 years. I have never heard of a woman convincing herself to go on a date and being glad she went on the date she convinced herself to go on. So you never have to convince yourself to go on a date again. There's no duty dating. You don't have to date three times to see if something develops. It doesn't have to be fireworks, as this article and all researchers say. All right, we just need positive scores above six and comfort, fun, and attraction. Use that metric. Literally write it down when you get home from the date. You will not be disappointed. My name is Evan Marcatz. I'm a dating coach for high-achieving women who have everything but the guy. If that describes you, go to evanmarcatz.com forward slash apply. Watch a special video that I've created for you that shows you how to fix your broken man picker right, and make better dating and relationship choices that lead to lasting love. Right, apply to love you. We'll talk on the phone. We'll figure out if you're a good fit for coaching. And I promise you that I will do everything in my power to make sure that you can make good decisions on your own for the rest of your life when it comes to men. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Love You podcast. Don't forgive us, forget to give us a positive review if you have something nice to say about this podcast on Apple or Spotify. Thank you. Good night.